Thank you. If you allow, I would like to leave this whole identity. Okay. Anyone else can join, you know, it, it works like that, actually, you know, it's not specific, you know, if you feel this is something that uh, appeals to you, you have a sense of what that means for you. Uh, maybe I ask you what it means for you. I see that life cannot be lived longer from any Can sense. it be lived what? Longer. Long, longer. Oh, I have an appointment to see here, Dr. Sun, to, uh, <laughs> not hearing something. But you, to live uh, longer, uh, functioning only on personal identity. Any kind of identity. Uh, any kind of. So, supposing you would have no. Seeing what you say, if this is what you really say, you have seen by your own power that it doesn't work, actually, uh, that life lived merely at the under the, the government of a personal self, of ego, it doesn't work for you. If you come by you, you come to see that, because that's a very, very rare thing for a human being to say, that uh, at the place of my person, it's not working. Because they say we are seven and a half billion human beings currently together. How many will say this? I don't know. Even you hit rock bottom, even sick, dying, who is saying like that, that, yeah, it doesn't work? It's not, oh, life doesn't work. No, it doesn't work with this one in charge. You hear? Why my ears clink, clink? What is he saying? Then, supposing there was no external help to come for you, already, Because life itself must have initiated this stage in your maturity to come to a place that uh, living by ego, yes, of course, biologically I can go on, but in terms of joy and peace, happiness, it's not, not, none of that is it's not paying off living from the position of uh, personal identity. So I would say, life itself, by God's grace, have assisted you to come to that level. So it cannot leave you alone. So if no one else was to come in to support you from there, would you be lost? You did not come to that merely... It's not the ego that came to... Um, the realization, you know what, uh, we're not doing well in this house. We need help. <coughs> is it the mind that is saying that? So something else, has, some level of intelligence is there that's saying, actually, no, it's not really working. No matter how much I try to uh, imagine and to you know, somehow it, it doesn't work. Even by imagining my life is good, I'm doing really good. I see people on the street, I smile and say, this, how are you doing? I say, I'm too good. But actually inside I'm dying. You see? So he, he's saying that. So where to go from here? If you are approaching the God of existence, at this stage, I would say the Lord has prepared you for this beautiful failure. He said, okay, you have tried it your way. Now try it my way. What way would this be, though? You see, for me, when I listen to you, I say, wow, that is very, very... Mm, you're on the you're on the edge of the most amazing onwardness. Don't lapse back. Don't fall back into something. What can happen then? So what are you asking? Total freedom. Yeah? Total freedom. 
So if all the things you mentioned is not working, and I were to say, then okay, anyone can do this. Just right now, just just in this moment, just leave everything, without expecting it. Leave all of that to a side. Okay, just leave all of this then, with me. I say, just leave this. All the concerns about this. Just can, is it possible? Anybody can follow what I'm saying. Uh, don't be carrying this around. Don't carry your bag of troubles around. Say, okay, put it down. Last week, I think you listened to one satsang, which I say now, and put it all in the basket of God. Suppose God put the basket and say, all your troubles until now. Put it. This is my basket. Put them all in this basket of God. Whatever it may be, past troubles, future anticipated troubles, identity crisis, everything. Put it in this basket of God. Is possible that is possible that you would know what to do? Don't do don't do this. Meaning to leave everything then. We're not going to describe what particular problems you're concerned about. If I say put it all then the basket of God is there. Put it all in the basket of God. But I need someone who would really do it. Because we are skilled with words and with our tongue we say things. But we have not actually fulfilled them inside our heart. Could you do it? Then it's possible. Suppose you go, you had no money. You go to someone's house who you know and say, "Brother, I'm I'm so hungry. I'm sick. I've got I I, I really all I need. I, I, can you can you give me twenty pounds? That will sort my day out. Please, can you help me?" And this man says, "Twenty pounds. I give you two thousand pounds." What will you do? You accept it. You say, "Oh, brother, I'm so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you." That is a practical help or not? The practical help or not? You take your money. You say, "Thank you so much, brother. I'll pay you back when I can." He says, "You don't have to pay back. Take it, go." Tell me if, when you leave, if your life is the same. Even you have not spent one pound. You have not spent one euro out of this two thousand euro. And already you are feeling what? You haven't spent it, no. You have it. Now you're leaving with the two thousand euro, and just the chance that look what oh, my life is already changing. You follow? I don't know if you can listen like that. So I've said to you, whatever all these things that you yourself have uh, verified, you you say that these they don't work. So I'm not telling you they don't work. You are admitting it's not working. Okay, my fantasies are not working. I said, okay, put them all in the basket of God. God told me to tell you, put them in this basket of God today. Okay, all of them. In the basket of God. Like the man who has been given the two thousand, who asked for twenty euros, he is given two thousand euros, and without spending one euro. Already, <sighs> relief is here. Can you feel this relief? Can you do it? Because your mind will tell you, "Yeah, it's a nice exercise. I'll try it later." That's part of the trouble, by the way. I'm speaking right now, even. And what comes from you? What comes from you? Maybe doubt. Maybe mm, I don't think it's going to work like that. So already you defeat yourself. Maybe if I show you two thousand euro, you much better. And then if by God's grace said you know you do this, and now show me leave, really leave it, and see if it works. But you must leave it. Not tell you to go work it out. I'm not giving you any any tricks. You leave it then, meaning, don't be bothered about it anymore. Okay. So, what is the problem now? No, I just trust your word. No problem. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I give you the two thousand euros. You say, listen. Okay. So you feel better? Yes, I trust you. No, you, you trust the two thousand euro. <laughs> trust the two thousand euro. 
You take it to the bank, say, could you put it on one of those machines to see if it's really real money, if it's fake money? They say, ah, no, you say, no, I trust it because it came from a friend. It came from someone I trust. So you are relieved of your trouble. Unless, but don't go back and say, um, sorry, I, uh, one of the things I left with you, can I take it back for just a sort of thought? Let it fail, but you don't fail. Then you put it, then offer, say, actually, okay, I, can it be so simple? Or we have to go to the next move, which is techniques, give you some technique. Can it be so simple? This is the most kind offer. You see, the, this interaction is open all the time. Let's see where it fell, if it fell. But I'd rather you don't go to try and prove where it fell. See where it succeed. You see, the problem, if there's anything, is not even just the mind, but the investment in mind. You believe more in, uh, in, in the sorrow than in the freedom and the joy. You know? Many people still have what we call no-go areas, meaning that nobody will do all the spiritual stuff, but it don't come near this stuff. Don't, I'm preserving this part of myself. You know the cost of this? Whatever you preserve in the realm of phenomenality, you will need more lives to sort it out. You transcend this. Because you see the valuelessness of this. That our lives can become stagnant. You're reading and you're singing bhajans and doing all these things, but you're something is stagnant. Like a kind of tumor in ta inside. No light is, can get to it. Not even the light of God can reach it. Because what? It is within your choice. And the most powerful thing you have is the choice. And actually, we are living our choice. You may complain, but if you follow and trace it, you made a choice for some things that bring in other bad company, and you're having to deal with it. So those of you who can recognize what I'm sharing, that sometimes we stagnate, and what we do is we cover it with very intelligent learning. We learn many things, we can recite many things, but here, this tumor is untouched. And these things manifest later into physical sickness also. So the invitation, rather than feel, oh, we will move so easily into beingness, there's a stubbornness. And what we're doing is you're learning about being, but still hanging out in personhood. So is this a good compromise? And can you relate to what I'm saying also? And this, for this reason, it seems that we can carry on. And we can carry on. Five years next time, you're still asking, yes, Babaji, but my mind gets so strong, and sometimes I, I'm not able to sleep because this thing is coming so strong. And I'm telling you where it comes from. We have not as yet offered up ourselves. If you find that somehow these, these things are still lingering and very strong patterns in your life, you cannot move forward, it's like uh, they just bring like bad luck around you all the time. When you detect them like this, you may offer them. I put this in the basket of God. May I tell you like this? Yes. I put this in the basket of God. Father, I choose, I see that here there is a stuckness in me. And today I offer it. I put it within the capacity you give to do this. And I cut this connection from my heart. Please help me to transcend, to wash this out. Then light opens up in you, and these things begin to thin away, and very quickly also. But if you want to do it in your strength, and your strength is an exaggeration, because you have not been able to overcome the egoic limitations by yourself. 
So work with universal consciousness, which is the source and essence of yourself. You may refer to it as God or your Guruji or whatever like this. It, it, it adapts. And you say, please help me. By yourself, you don't have to tell anyone else. You just say in your heart, I choose to be free of this. I see the, the sense of vulnerability of letting it go. Because these things feel like they, they have some value. But you're retaining identity with certain Vasanic uh, tendencies. Do you know what I'm speaking or not? Yes. Am I on my own in this or not? Okay. So, as you recognize, then you offer. I'm not here to shame anyone. You, it was you. No, no, no. There is no perfect human being. There is no perfect person. But here is the thing. You are originally not a person. You are a presence. You are the God manifest. It says in the scripture, as it not been saying, that ye are gods, but you will die as mere men, because you have forsaken the truth. Meaning that you, this is our capacity to wake up. The whole purpose of a human existence is to wake up into your original nature. But the trap is to fall from grace by identifying merely as the body, which is the instrument through which consciousness tastes experiencing, and lost your way. You became a person. You don't know what a person is. A person is not a stable entity. It's a myth. And that's why even the idea of yourself keeps changing. You outgrow ideas of self, but you cannot outgrow your being. You follow? Yes. Perhaps you will listen to this satsang again within your own time and follow and say this. Yes, here I'm catching something. And here maybe another one. And maybe quite a few things are coming up that you see where your ego betrays your opportunity to be liberated from this. Only when you have moved and recognized these things are you now qualified for awakening. Otherwise you are stuck. And the best we are going to be is a sattvic person, meaning that you are a good person, nice person, but still defending personhood when you are the light of God. Do you understand or not? Yes. So I'm not blaming, calling out anybody, oh, you, you. No, who not? Perfection is not in personhood, but in presence is the door through which that awakening will be complete. And don't feel, oh, I've got a long way to go. No, you've been a long way going. It can be cut by grace. Whatever trouble, this is the power of the grace of God, that however long we've been on the road of turmoil, that like this it can change. That's the power of the transformative presence of God's grace. And this is satsang. So a two-aspected satsang. One is working on the person to improve the person. Improving the person means what? Diminishing the person's uh, the personal effect transitioning from person into presence. That is the work. And it's a living work. It's a powerful work. And the fruits of it are beautiful, and they are immediate, actually. So if you recognize today, wait a second, that's why I keep going around and around, because somehow I'm holding on to something and uh, uh, treat it like, you know, it is the flower of God, but actually, it is a, a betrayal of your original nature. And you put it out. Yes. Then do it and tell me if it fail. Tell me if it fails, or simply you let the mind come and the mind says, ah, this thing, and it's not working, that's not my way, my way is yoga, my way is a sort of like, I like to walk and go into the forest, my way is to be with animals, whatever kind of thing you tell yourself to get out of these things. Because the ego is a growth, and it is locked into some shapes. But you are not a shape. 
unless you believe you are. And if you believe you are, you believe that into existence, it will become your experience. Are these things clearing? Yes. Is it clear enough? So my encouragement is to come forward in this inside your heart and to experience the change that comes out of it also. I'm not asking you to become this religious person that re- I'm saying before religion is born, the self is. To point back to that which is nothing wrong with religion, religion is here also to help. But sometimes it can become a bit uh, contaminated here and there also. So don't just listen to what people read and tell you. Say, what you're reading from the, uh, the Avadu Tagita, where can I buy? You read for yourself then. You say, I don't have time to read. I don't have much time. Then whatever time you have, if you can dedicate it earnestly, it will bear fruit. I am in support of this movement in you. And from that place, I say, bless everyone here. I leave no one out. Even someone who feels, I don't want, I don't want. Because I know that you do want, but you listen to your mind. The mind is running. So I said, I bypass your mind. I pray blessing into you, because I know that no one can wake up and regret it. The more you lose of yourself personally, the more you are of yourself truthfully. You're not going to become someone else. You're, you're going to start unbecoming what you're not. That we have been thinking that, that this, is my, this is what I am. I can't change. That's how God made me. That's nonsense. That's how your mind made you. We're good.